Welcome back. In this video, we're walking through exercise 5-1 from Merox PHP and MySQL. This is again working with the product manager application that we worked with in previous chapters. In this chapter, it's going to be designed a little bit more with the MVC pattern that we learned about in chapter 5. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump into this, starting with step 1. We open up our browser, navigate to Exercise Starts, Chapter 05, Exercise 1, and that brings up this menu where we can select Product Manager, Product Catalog. If I click on the Product Manager for Step 2, now I get this error, and if you're in my class, you may get to see this error as well since we set up our databases differently. We talked about this in the Exercise 4-1 video, so I'm going to open up my Chapter 4, Exercise 1, database.php, copy that because it's got my updated username and password and DB name. So I'll copy that whole file, open up Chapter 5, Exercise 1, model database.php, and I'll just paste that in so it's got my updated info. When I save that, reload the product manager, and now I've got my data showing up. So like I told you last week, keep that database.php around because we'll be using that and updating that every week. Okay, so step two tells us to add a new product. I'll click on the add product. It tells us the code to use as test one. The name was test product 2211, and the list price was $550. So we click on the add product, and that's great for step two. Step three is go to the product catalog, and to do that we can click the back button a couple times, or just go back to exercise starts, chapter 05, exercise 1. Click the product catalog link, and then you see we have a link for our new test product. So we'll click on that to view the product we just added. Note that the image doesn't display, and to fix that we'll go to the images directory, so chapter 5, exercise 1, we've got images, we just need to rename this test.php to test1.png, sorry, and if we reload the page then we should see the guitar show up there. Okay, step four, go back to the product manager application again. So let's go to product manager, then click on the list categories link on the bottom of the page, and we've got a white page. Note that this link doesn't display a page, even though it is coded correctly. You'll fix this later when you enhance the index.php page for the application. So click the back button. Okay, now we get into implementing some MVC um, pages and structure. So, moving on to step five, open the category list.php file, which we have in the product manager directory. Okay category list.php. It contains some of the headings that you'll need for this page and a link back to the products page. So we've got our headings, we've got a link back to the list products, and we've got a couple notes of where we're going to add some, some code. Okay, step six says open the index.php file inside of the product manager. This index.php serves as our controller in the MVC format. And it tells us that we need to add an action that displays the category list page. Then test this to make sure it works correctly. So, in our MVC pattern, at least at this point, we've got a list, a chain of if-else statements that check an action. So we've got an action for list products, one for delete product, one for show add form. And if the action parameter, action variable, is in this case, if it's list products, then it runs all this code. If the action parameter is delete product, then it would run all this code, and so on for the other sections. So what we need to do for step, we are on step six. Step six is we need to add a condition for the category list. If you hover over the list categories, well, we'll click on it so you can see it in the URL, you can see the action that it's indicating is list underscore categories. So we'll add a handler for that just here in our controller. So we add, need to add another 
there we go, else if block action equals equals list categories, then we need to do some stuff. And basically we just need to include the category list.php. Okay, so now we handle that action, and when we reload the page, now we get our list category or category list page showing. Notice we don't have any rows here because that section is commented out right now, and we don't have the part to add a category. This is going to be very similar to what we did in exercise 4-1, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. Okay, step 7. In the category list file, write the code that creates the category table as shown above on page 189 with all the category names in the first column and delete buttons in the second column. Then make sure this table works correctly. So basically this part is exactly what we did in 4-1. So I'm actually going to go to 4-1 and I might even use that code. We've got our for each here and our table. I'm going to borrow this and see if that works for us in category list. If we kept the variable names the same in the book, then it would. So I'll go ahead and save that and see how that works. Uh, category list needs to do something else. So one thing we did in our index here is we did an include category list, but we haven't set these variables for categories to loop over a result set. So we'll go ahead and add that in. And we already have a function to do that. That's, that was defined in our model. So we'll open up the category DB, and we do have a function that's get categories. We've already used it in the index under list products, so I'm just going to copy the same line and put it inside our list categories section. OK, now if I reload on the right side, then we've got those variables are set and the data shows up correctly. Okay, that's good for step seven. In step eight, it wants us to write the code that lets the user add a category to the database. And this should look just like it did in exercise 4 1 or as shown in the diagram on page 189. So since we did this in exercise 4, I'm going to go back to our, uh, this is add product form or I'm trying to remember where we did this. This is the category list. We created this form for add category. I'm going to copy that same thing and put that form in here. Now we do need to modify this a little bit for the um, MVC pattern. We no longer have an add category.php. We go to the index.php always in the MVC pattern you go to your controller and we need to indicate what action we want the controller to take. So one common way to do that is with a hidden input. So I'm going to put an input type equals hidden, name equals action, and value equals, I'm going to call it add um, category. Okay, so we've got that as a hidden input. Now, since we have this add category value, let's see if our index actually has the add category, which it doesn't yet. So we're going to be adding that in the next couple of steps. And if I reload on the right side, I can see that my form's here, and that's working. And so that's great for step eight. Okay, step nine, it wants us to open the model category category db.php file and add two functions to it so that add uh, and delete are functions that are available to us. So open the category db. We've got get categories, get category name. We want a function add category and it's going to have a name. So we need to write the SQL for that. And we want another function called delete category and it's going to take a category ID. You always want to delete by the ID. Okay, 
So let's write the SQL for these. To add a category, we need to do an insert. First, we need to use our global DB. Actually, we'll need that for both of these functions. So I'll go ahead and copy that in. I'll write a query here. Query equals insert into categories. Category name. And then we'll give it values with a bound parameter, just like that. And so our query looks pretty good there. Let's borrow some of these other statement prepare statement execute. So we've got db prepare statement, statement bind value, we're using name, and our variable is name. Okay, and we've got statement execute. We actually don't need to fetch the results because this is an insert, and that's really all that we need to do in this case. Okay, for our delete is going to look very similar. So I'm going to copy what we just wrote. And the only difference is instead of an insert, this is going to be a delete query. So it's going to be delete from categories uh, where, I need an extra space in this one, where category ID equals our bound parameter of ID. Okay, we prepare the query again. We bind value, value for ID to the category ID that we're variable that we're sending in, and we execute that function. And we close the cursor. So that all looks good for these two functions. We've got an insert, and we've got a delete. So great. I'm actually going to take this last uh, question mark uh, uh, greater than sign out. We don't need these closing delimiters, and NetBeans is telling us that. So if your file contains only PHP, then you don't need to uh, have that closing tag. And you often don't want to because sometimes there's white space after it. Like if I had a couple space spaces after it, that would mess up the HTML output and uh, causes all kinds of havoc if it's if you're not expecting that. So it is common practice to not have the closing tag if the file only contains PHP. If it has HTML in it, then you do want to close your PHP tags. Okay, so that was good for step 9. Step 10, it wants us to open the index file in the product manager and add the two new actions. So let's go back to our index and we're going to add two more actions. So we just added list categories we're going to add some others. Else if action equals, and what does it want us to add? The first action should add a category to the database, and the second action should delete a category. So I'm just going to use the same names. Add category. Then we'll have some stuff to do. Else if action equals equals delete category then we'll have some other things to do. Okay. And it gives us a tip to return to the category list page after adding or deleting a category, you can pass an action to the controller with a statement like what is printed in the book. So that's what it's telling us to do. We'll go ahead and add that in to both of these. Header location dot question mark action equals list categories. Okay, I'll copy that same line into my add category action. So what this is doing is it sends back a header to the browser that says go to this location instead. The dot means the exact same file that you're already on. Since we're always loading the index.php, the dot is referring to the index.php or the current page. And again, we have that action parameter as a get parameter that tells uh, which action we want to run. The list categories action is the one we just wrote here just a minute ago. Okay, so now we want to make these add and delete categories work. 
Okay, so in the case of add category, we have an input. I'm going to borrow from before. Um, going back to our category list, we wrote this form, and it submits basically just one item, which is the, uh, the name, whatever you type into this field. So we want to get that name, and that's the category we want to add. So first thing is to get that, that input. I'm going to actually give it a filter sanitize string. Filter sanitize sanitize string. Okay, we'll do some validation of this, kind of like we do down here in the add product section. We'll say if name not equal null. Um, actually, we'll follow the same pattern. We'll check that it is equal to null. If name equals equals null, or name equals equals false, then we'll create an error message. Error equals uh, please provide a name. Okay, and then we'll include slash error slash error dot php. I'm just following the same pattern as what we have for add product. Okay, so if there is valid data, then we have our else case. We'll say add category. And we have our name variable, so we'll pass in name. And then we will, then we'll do this header section. Because we only want to do that redirection if the category was added. If the category was not added, then they go to the error page. OK, so that should be good for our add. We'll test that out in just a second. Let's quickly write our delete category and try this uh, this out. Do we have a delete product? We can. We do have a delete product, so we can borrow the same pattern from there. So delete category. We're going to use the same category ID uh, input. We validate that as an int. We just want to make sure that this name matches what we send with the delete button. So let's go check out the delete button. Ooh, we need to update our delete button to go to um, index.php, and this one should also send a hidden parameter. Input type equals hidden, name equals action, value equals del delete category. Okay. So you send across a hidden category ID and a hidden action. So this category ID does match what we're using for our input post. OK, great. So the next part of the pattern is validating that. So if category ID is null or category ID equals equals false, then we will give an error. Error equals missing category ID. And we'll include errors, error.php. Okay, otherwise this was successful. Or at least we have a category ID, so we can go ahead and try to delete that. So we'll call our function we just wrote in our category db.php, called delete category. We'll call that function pass in our category ID, and that should be great. OK, and once that's done, we'll return to our category list page. OK, so those are the two functions we just wrote for add category and delete category, and now we can go ahead and test those out. So step 11 is actually testing it. So couple things. Let's add two categories. I'm going to call it cat1. Oh, we got a white white page. That's great. Our white page is awesome. So could we get to try out some debugging here. Okay. Bring up the F12 tools on the network tab. And when I hit the add button to submit, 
It might just be that I needed to reload the page because I had some uh, some typos earlier. I'll go ahead and click the add, and I do get my white page again, so that's great. I'll click on the index, and if I scroll down to the bottom of the headers, I can actually see what it's sending along. So it's sending along action as add category and name as cat1. So we do know that we're coming into the add category section, and we are passing a name. So let's go ahead and do some little a little debugging here. I'll echo out the name, and then exit just so we can see what's coming through. If I reload, I do have a name here, so that's great, which means it's inside this section, or at least it got the name passed in. I have a feeling this means I uh, messed up something in my add category function, but that's okay. Actually, we'll go ahead and jump into add category and see how this is working. So if I echo add category and name and reload my page, category one, oh, now it's working great for me. So I just didn't save something. Well, that's too bad. We didn't get to do more debugging, but I'm glad it's working now. Okay, I need to go a little bit slower. I've got my category one. Try category two. So categories we're adding right now. Uh, come back and save my category list. I think I didn't have that saved. So my, if we inspect my delete button, yes, my delete button is doing the wrong thing right now. I had just modified that, so it goes to our index now, and it has the hidden action which before it did not. So if I reload this page and inspect that element again, now it's going to the index and with the hidden action. So now the delete button should work. And there we go. So now we've got category one, category two. Okay, I just need to save all my files as I go along. Okay, and it says navigate to the add product page, and we should see our two categories in here, which we do, category one, category two. Great, so that's, that's good for step 11. Step 12, test the application by deleting the categories that you just added. However, don't delete any of the existing categories again. Okay, so we'll come back to our category list. So this was, yes, product manager list categories. We'll go ahead and delete these two. Don't delete any of these three original ones. If you do, you'll need to restore your database. And that's fine, you have the files to do that. If I go to my list products, um, add product, now it's only got those three items again. Okay, and that's that's good for step 12. Okay, step 13. If the formatting of your page isn't exactly like the one above, don't worry about that. The focus here is on web programming, not HTML and CSS. So we are mostly back-end programming, not front-end. That's mostly just a note. Okay, step 14. Open the product list.php and product view files in the product catalog. I'm going to close some of these extra files. Now we're in the product catalog section for product list and product view. Okay. Note that these files use the same code in the nav tag to display the list of navigation items. So in our product list, we've got this class as nav, and it uh, loops through all the products and prints those out. So we should have a similar thing inside of here. We've got a class of nav in this nav section, and it loops through categories and prints those out. The product list should do the same thing for, okay, yes. Product list does the same thing for categories. It also, interestingly, has the same kind of loop for products. So that's good for step 14. It's just notice that the nav section is doing the same code, looping over categories to, to list those. In step 15, it wants us to create a, another PHP file 
to handle this. Inside of our view folder, we're going to call this categories nav.php. Okay. And it's telling us basically to copy all everything that's in the nav section into this file categories nav.php. Then replace the code for the nav tag in product list and product view with the appropriate include statements. Okay, so now, since this is in a common file, we'll use some PHP to include, let's see, dot dot slash view slash categories nav.php. And then we'll close that PHP tag. Okay, same thing in our products list. We don't need to have this nav section anymore. We'll just include that same uh, view categories nav.php. Okay, save both of these files. That's where I ran into trouble last time. And I want us to go test and make sure this works. Okay, so we go to our product catalog, and my categories are listed here. Uh, we'll go to, here's our view products, and we still have our uh, categories listed here. Just to verify that it's using the categories nav.php, let's add something else in here. Um, maybe a header right before the, the UL. So this will be, we'll just give it an H1 and say navigation. H1. Okay, just to test that it's working. When I reload, I do have the navigation there. Okay, take that back out so everything looks pretty again. And that's about it for exercise 5-1.